Hello, welcome to part 21 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our question number 101. A 50 year old female complains of cervical pain that radiates to the left anterior arm and radial side of the hand. Manual muscle testing of the biceps reveals grade 3. A diagnosis of cervical spondylosis is made. Which of the following is true about cervical spondylosis? Option A. It is strongly influenced by genetics. Option B. The onset and rate of progression is not influenced by repetitive and subclinical trauma. Option C. In patients older than 40 years, chronic cervical degeneration is the most common cause. Option D. It affects the vertebral body in the vertebral disc of the neck. The contents of the spinal canal are not usually affected. And the answer is Option C. In patients older than 40 years, chronic cervical degeneration is the most common cause. Explanation to this question is, cervical spondylosis is usually caused by chronic cervical degeneration in individuals 40 years and above. It affects the vertebral bodies, intervertebral disc, nerve root and spinal cords. It is not clear whether genetics play a role in cervical spondylosis development. The onset and rate of progression may be influenced by repetitive subclinical trauma. Individuals who carry load on their heads repeatedly are most likely to develop cervical spondylosis. Now let's move to our question number 102. You are teaching a 4-point crutch gait pattern to a 16-year-old basketball player who fractured his left tibia. Which answer below describes this pattern? Option A. Left crutch, right foot, right crutch, left foot. Option B. Left crutch, right crutch, swing through right foot. Option C. Left crutch, right foot, left foot, right crutch. Option D. Right crutch, right foot, left crutch, left foot. And the answer is Option A, left crutch, right foot, right crutch, left foot. Explanation to this question is, a four-point crutch gait pattern for a patient who is non-weight bearing on the left lower extremity would be left crutch, right foot, right crutch, left foot. Now let's move to our question number 103. A female patient with angina is referred to clinic after total knee replacement. The patient has a history of angina, which is usually relieved by rest and intake of nitroglycerin. The pain occurs with increased activity or stress. Based on these details of information, the patient has which type of angina? Option A. Unstable angina. Option B. Variant angina. Option C. Principal angina. Option D. Stable angina. And the answer is? Option D. Stable angina. Explanation to this question is, the patient has stable angina. This type of angina is related to myocardial demand. Option A is manifested by angina at rest. Option B and C refers to same type of angina. This is related to coronary artery vasospasm. Now let's move to our question number 104. A 3 year old female comes to the clinic with the following symptoms. Neck deformity that causes rotation and tilting of the head. The mother reports that it is a result of a MVA two weeks ago. What treatment would you recommend to the mother for the home program to obtain maximal result? Option A. No home program. Treatment should only be done with a therapist. Option B. Ice pack and strengthening. Option C. Electrical stimulation. Option D. Stretching exercises and proper positioning or posture. And the answer is... Option D. Stretching exercises and proper positioning or posture. Explanation to this question is, the case study emphasizes that the patient has a neck deformity that causes rotation and tilting of the head, more commonly described as torticollis. The appropriate treatment program for this clinical case would be stretching exercise and proper positioning. This would assist in reducing the neck rotation and tilting of the head. Now let's move to our question number 105. 
a patient presents with sudden onset of weakness of the facial muscle on the right side, the patient is unable to wrinkle the forehead, smile, pucker the lips or wrinkle the nose. There is an absence of tearing in the patient's right eye, diminished taste sensation on the right side of the tongue and dryness of the mouth. The patient's corneal reflex is absent on the right but normal on the left side and pinprick and the temperature sensation are normal on both sides of the face. This presentation is characteristic of Option A. Trigeminal Neuralgia Option B. Bell's Palsy Option C. Left Cortical Cerebrovascular Accident Option D. Oculomotor Nerve Damage And the answer is Option B. Bell's Palsy Explanation to this question is Trigeminal Neuralgia causes facial pain all of the signs and symptoms in the question are indicative of partial nerve lesion affecting the facial nerve. This type of lesion is Bell's palsy. A left cerebrovascular accident affects only the lower facial muscles below the eye. Damage to the oculomotor nerve causes paralysis of one or more of the muscle that moves the eyeball. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.